Hi, Sequels friends. Today we are doing a Joe Mar Vintage Shoebox Update Recap. Oh my gosh, you guys. I am so, so excited to share this one with you. I was so, so excited to pull numbers together for this one because I could not believe how quickly these vintage shoes sold as well as the price I was getting on some of these vintage shoes. So I am thrilled to share a recap with you. So let's get into it. Hi Sequels friends. Thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. It is great to have you here. Thank you to all of the returning Sequels friends as well as some of the new ones. If you are new, my name is Heather and I'm a part-time reseller and I use this YouTube channel to document my journey. Let's get right into it because I am so thrilled to share these numbers with you guys. Now I should probably let you guys know if you are new what an update recap is. So whenever I do an unboxing on this channel and once I've sold through 50% of that box then I come back here and I give you an update recap that is where I let you know how much so far has sold what have I grossed so far what have I netted so far how many items I have left and what my potential gross and net are on the remaining items to me it is very very important to share this information with you guys I love a good unboxing as much as the next person, but a lot of times when I'm watching other resellers unbox things, I'm wondering to myself, are those comps accurate? Is it really gonna sell for that? Did it really sell for that amount? And you don't ever really actually know. So I think these recaps are super, super important. One, to know that you can trust the information that I tell you, that I'm always constantly learning and re-evaluating what my gross projections and all of that can be but also so that if you are new to doing any of these mystery boxes you can know not only what i thought i could make but what i actually ended up making because anybody who's been doing this for any amount of time knows that you may search comps one week and two months later those comps may be completely different so i really think this is important it not only lets me know whether my investments were worth their while but it lets you know whether these investments are worth their while first up if you did not watch the original unboxing i'm going to go ahead and link it above and below this shoe box i um did the video in july of this year um it is the jomar vintage shoe pack it cost $50 and it cost me 45 because I had a 10% off coupon. It uh, cost me $8.59 in shipping. So all in, I'm at $53.59. 15 pairs of shoes come in this box, but I ended up listing just 14. One of them was pretty peely in the lining in the inside. And when I tried to clean it, it's, you know, like stuff's falling everywhere. So I just didn't feel appropriate selling it so those were donated if you divide out the 14 listings by the 53 59 that i spent that means my cost of goods on this box is three dollars and 83 cents to me that is an excellent price for shoes definitely less than what i would pay thrifting in my local area so because i haven't gone back and watched that original video i'm gonna post right here what i said in that video my gross projections would be and we're gonna leave that on the screen while i'm telling you what my gross projections are so to date again i've sold eight of the 11 items so to date on the eight items i have grossed five hundred dollars and ten cents I have netted, which means after platform fees, shipping, because I charge shipping, but I also have to pay shipping on um, eBay. I offer free shipping on Etsy. So once you account for platform fees, shipping, and cost of goods, what I ended up netting was $322.02. So that's my current gross and net versus the projected gross and net. And my ROI is coming in at a pretty healthy 64.4%. So right now I'm going to flip over to the computer, show you the spreadsheet, and we're going to talk about what items netted 20 bucks. And I'll put pictures up there so that you can see what all of those are. 
All right, here is my handy dandy spreadsheet showing which items have sold. And as per usual, any item that netted me over $20 is in sequels pink. So let's just start up at the top. These are in no particular order. First up are the vintage Charles Jordans in black velvet. They are pointed toe pumps. If you watch that unboxing, you'll see I got a whole slew of pretty much the same style pointed toe pump. Um, there's a picture up here so that you can see better of what those look like. Um, they ended up selling on eBay and I ended up netting $22.78 after all was said and done. Next up, the same pump, but in a navy leather. I tell you guys all the time, if you see anything in genuine leather and it is navy, pick it up. Navy sells really, really well. Um, these sold on Poshmark, and they ended up netting me $29.87 after they sold for $44. Um, again, Charles Jordan. <laughs> these are black pumps. They also sold on Poshmark. They also sold for $44, and they also netted me $29.87. Uh, these Ferragamo little bow ballet flats, super cute. Um, I had them listed for $69, took an or, uh, offer for $49, and still ended up netting $35.37. Uh, these Ninas were ones that I just am so shocked about. Um, they ended up selling on Etsy. Uh, I had them in my spreadsheet marked at 29 but I must have listed them higher and I'm not really sure how or why <laughs> that happened but I had them listed clearly at 59 because I show here that I sold them for 63.13 and um, I do free shipping on Etsy but it does include tax so I don't know how that happened but I'm so glad that it did because I would have never known that these would have ever gotten that price point. So after everything was said and done I ended up making $45.25 on them and again I do pay for the shipping on that. I do offer them free so even with the $7.96 cost of shipping I still made $45.25. That is ridiculous. Take a look at that silhouette and that will give you a better idea of why that one sold and why it sold for a good price. And I also think the black satin helps, especially if somebody is looking more for a evening wear shoe and they'd be more likely to pay up for evening wear. I know you're shocked to see this, but guess what? There's some more Charles Jordan. <laughs> This is a pair of black patent leather Charles Jordan as well as a pair of, I called them silver pewter, like a metallic. Um, I ended up offering these to a bundled customer on eBay. We worked out pricing that worked out best for her. Um, as you could see, I kind of fluctuated the prices. She ended up paying um, a full price of $49 plus shipping on the pewter pair but then I ended up giving her a lower price on the second pair. Um, once you balance that out, the black patent leather ended up netting me $23.38 and the silver pewter ended up netting me $28.94, pretty much close to that same pricing that I had gotten on Poshmark. So again, Charles Jordan, I would have never known about this brand. I would have no idea about it if I did not attempt you know, just try these mystery boxes. And I'm telling you, if you see that brand in the wild, definitely pick it up. It is a vintage brand that has a following. And this bundle lady specifically told me she loves these shoes. She hasn't been able to find any since the 90s and just realized there is a consumer for this. Um, and then last up are these Alter Ego. Love these square toe mesh stretch upper, very, very 90s, sold these on Etsy as well. Again, started them out at 69, and I sold them flat out for 69, offer free shipping on Etsy, but still netted $55.95. Those in the Nina pumps really brought in the money. Let's talk about the three pairs that I have left. So of the three pairs that I still have to sell, 
that is coming to a potential gross based on my high and low retails of 107 to 167. As I always do for these videos, if these items are remaining, I always just assume that I'm gonna make the low on them. And also note that those retails may be adjusted from what I originally quoted six months ago, because if I feel like it hasn't moved or comps have changed, then I change my retails. So let's assume we're gonna make $107 on that. If we added that to our $510, that means that we would make a gross on this box of $607.10. What the hell? Now, if we still want to know what the total potential net would be, and our ROI was coming in at 64.4, so multiply that new gross by 0.644, and we have a new potential net of $390.97. That means we could make almost, not only make, that means we could put in our pocket $400 off this $54 investment. Yes, folks, I am not playing here when I'm telling you that that is seven times the investment. What? What? I think I'm loving me vintage shoes as much as I love me some vintage clothes. This is ridiculous. The other thing that I really, really want to stress here is this entire um, vintage shoe box was really just all dress shoes. And I hear so many resellers talk about how dress shoes don't sell. It's COVID, people work from home, people aren't wearing dress shoes, and I say bull caca to that. <laughs> I've sold dress shoes since I've been reselling with no problems, whether it's dress shoes I've thrifted, have come in other mystery boxes, or like this. Dress shoes do sell. There are certain people who are always gonna wear dress shoes. There are fashion people who are gonna wear dress shoes. And also you can wear dress shoes other places besides work. Sometimes it's hard not to influence what you like versus what the consumer likes when you're doing reselling. And it's really important to me, that's why it's super important to look at your numbers. Your brain sometimes skews what's really happening to your belief system. And it's when you look at the numbers, you can definitively tell what's happening. I sold eight pairs of dress shoes, lickety split, and these aren't the only eight pairs of dress shoes I've ever sold. So consider that when you're out thrifting, if the silhouette looks hot, if the brand looks hot, or if it's vintage and it looks like what people are liking now, don't sleep on dress shoes just because other resellers have told you it doesn't work for them. Give it a try for yourself and see how it works for you because I'm selling them all day long over here. So definitely a killer box, guys, right? So if you're new to my channel, you may not realize, but when I get a killer box like this, especially a box where it's the first time I've ever purchased it, you can pretty much guarantee that when it makes this kind of money, I'm gonna see if I can get my hands on another one. And guess what, guys? I got my grubby little mitts on another one. I have gotten some more vintage shoes in front of me from Jomar, a new shoe box, and I am really liking what came in it. If you found this video useful, helpful, or informative in any way, please do consider hitting that like or even hitting that share button. And if you haven't done so already and you are enjoying this content and you don't want to miss out on that unboxing that I do later this week, make sure that you go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring a ding ring that bell so that you're notified when that video drops. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate all of the new subscribers. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting my channel. It just means the world to me. And I'll see you guys later with some more reselling content. Bye-bye. So if you didn't see this Jomar shoebox unboxing, then you will definitely want to. I had to flip my paper because I was on the wrong page. Jesus Christ. So first up, if you have not watched this shoe, uh, Shoemar, 